People often talk about profit sharing as a way for workers and employees to gain a stake in the success of American businesses. In a world with weakened unions, how will workers get a cut of the profits? Employees overwhelmingly like the idea of profit sharing as a regular part of their pay. But there's been a way for the public to share in corporate success for more than a century. A dividend, literally dividing the profits. Here's how it works. You find a company that offers dividends. Then you buy their stock and wait. Usually each quarter, the company pays out a small part of its profit to shareholders, something like 10 cents a share. It doesn't sound like much, but over time, that money can really add up. As long as you own the stock, you'll get paid. Just like in Monopoly, people bought utility stocks, big, regulated companies, for small but regular dividend payments. But dividends have been around a lot longer than the game. Starting in 1790 or so, when we formed our modern government, the companies paid out most of their earnings uh, as dividends, and the investors expected to be paid a pretty healthy dividend. And I think one of the reasons for that is, you know, we didn't have an SEC then, uh, and so how did investors get information on how well their investments were doing? And one of the basic sources of information was the quarterly dividend. Iconic companies like General Mills, Procter & Gamble, and Coca-Cola have been paying dividends every year, uninterrupted, since the 1890s. The public got interested in stocks in a much bigger way in the 1920s than was disappointed, of course, during the Depression. But the financial reforms, I think, restored a lot of confidence in the integrity of the capital markets. Early in the 20th century, big, quintessential American companies were paying significant dividends. AT&T, you know, it was kind of a widows and orphans stock. They had a good dividend payout, and so, you know, hundreds of thousands of people owned stock in AT&T, and it was considered a blue chip stock with a very steady, growing dividend payout. If you bought AT&T stock just after Christmas in 2003, around $25 a share, the dividend payments that you get every quarter would have added up to about $25 by 2019. The stock essentially pays for itself in just over 15 years, whether the price goes up or down, and you still own the stock. Over the years, dividends have made up a good portion of overall returns in the stock market. Actually, not just a good portion. Since 1926, about 40% of total returns have come from dividends. As recently as the 1970s and 80s, you could get 4% return every year on dividends. But things have slowed down in recent decades. Why is that? Especially after the SEC came in, we had so much information on companies that was required by the government that we didn't necessarily demand that they pay out a lot of dividends. But taxation had something to do with it, too. You know, we taxed the dividends and capital gains. When you pay out a dividend, you know, the corporation has already paid a corporate income tax on the money it pays out as a dividend, and then the shareholder has to pay a tax on it, too. So the, that's a kind of double taxation, which may have discouraged uh, paying out a lot of money as dividends. More recently, new and exciting companies haven't offered dividends. The argument? They need to reinvest those profits into growing the business. That's how it was with the tech companies in the dot-com bubble. They were growing very fast, and if they paid out dividends, then they would probably have to go to the markets and issue more stock or borrow more money, and there are some negative features of doing that. And investors accepted the idea that a rapidly growing company should probably keep uh, 100% of its earnings and reinvest it in the business, and everybody was better off that way. Some of the largest companies in the world, like Amazon, Facebook, and Netflix, don't issue dividends as of 2019. Part of the decline has come in an era where stock buybacks have boomed in popularity. Chevron, Starbucks, Qualcomm, and Apple, just a, a few of the names of companies announcing big share buyback programs along with their earnings reports. It's also looking like it'll be a record-breaking year for share buybacks. That's when companies buy their own stock to help boost the price. This chart shows how yields from buybacks have outpaced dividends pretty much since the mid-2000s. In absolute value, buybacks have been larger than dividends every year since 2010, according to Howard Silverblatt at S&P Global. It's all part of keeping more of the profits inside the company. And that rationale for declining dividends might make you mad. 
I think corporate managers prefer to hang on to the uh, money that they earn instead of paying it out as dividends because a good part of their income may come from their stock options. And by keeping the money in the company, uh, the stock price tends to go up faster. But uh, some of the financial research shows that maybe uh, the investors would be better off if, if dividends were paid to them. Traditionally, it's big, mature companies with stable businesses that participate in this type of profit sharing. Once a company pays out a dividend, it can be hard to go back without the market punishing it by pushing the stock down. Of course, dividend yield fluctuates with the price of a stock. As long as the company keeps paying out the dividend, if the price of the stock goes down, the yield on the dividend goes up. That can be a sign of a bargain as long as the company is not in big trouble. But sometimes a dividend yield that's too high is a red flag. As of the beginning of 2019, some of the major companies with the best yielding dividends included CenturyLink, Ford, L Brands, and yes, AT&T. Still, after all of these years. So will we see a resurgence of dividends in upcoming years? It's unclear. 2018 saw the ninth straight year of more dollars being paid out as dividends, according to S&P Global's Silverblatt. But yields are still historically low. I think there's some financial research that shows that companies that pay out higher dividend rates actually have higher returns than ones that pay out lower rates. You know, I think there's still an argument to be made that it might be socially good if companies paid out more of their earnings because when the companies keep a large share of their earnings and reinvest it, sometimes they make mistakes. Regardless, if your investment goals align with a little less risk and stable earnings, dividend stocks may be for you. Especially in times of volatility, you can still make some income, even if the stock falls.